<laughs> Got it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Serpent Temple Podcast. I am here with Antti Bowman from the legendary band, Demolek. Hello. <laughs> and this is Floyd. Hello. <laughs> and I'm Nina. <laughs> so Antti, we're going to do like a really quick side card reading yep. and ask you like oh. fuck loads of questions as well. Okay. Um, so give this a shuffle. Hmm? I will hold the mic for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's no. going to be so like I'm not a, good a one-handed shuffle. shuffle. So. That's cool. Don't worry about it. Do you do you play um? What? I missed the Bowman. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the Bowman. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, yeah. do you play Magic the Gathering? Hmm? Do you play Magic the Gathering? Uh, no. Oh, that's a shame. No. I was wondering because you have no. like a D and D reference in there. I know. I, know uh, I used to. Well, I was into um, that kind of stuff, but. Uh, I've always been more into sci-fi and st stuff like that. So, ah. yeah, and uh, the name is because I I went to my to see my friend in in another town in Finland, and uh, he had this great ADD AD and D book, and uh, I loved the name and so on, and chose a name that doesn't reflect anything <laughs> <laughs> of it. So. Nice. Well, it's good to know. Yep. I, I accidentally asked you what your band name means, which sucks because that's like the worst question. To <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. I'll, I'll pull so. three cards for you. One, of, the first one's going to be your past. Okay. So, so pull that bad you have boy. Planted. Yes, planted. It's, it's a, a plant. Mm. Okay. What is it? And uh, I should show it to you. It's the cave. The cave. So yeah. I have a little book that explains the meaning. The cave. Mm. Do you want to give him one? Yeah, I'll give this a hold on to a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. I'm, I'm better with this book. one. <laughs> okay, what number is the cave? Uh, the cave is not a number, it's a word. <laughs> well, is it? There's a number right here. <laughs> okay. I cannot see, I'm, I'm so old. Sorry. I cannot see the numbers it's anymore. It's really dark, and we have like not enough hands. 39. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's not very strong. Okay, look, I'm, I'm there. 39, the cave. A character is prostrate, facing away from the light in the gloomy recesses of a deep cave. This card stands for depression and despair. It symbolizes withdrawal into the self as a result of pain or grief. It can also mean introversion or loneliness and acts as a reminder to the inquirer that the light awaits after a period of healing darkness. Healing darkness, okay. Yeah, healing darkness. How does that make you feel? Ah, it kind of, uh, well, first of all, no, I don't go into that. Uh, uh, this is random, but it's funny when they are written so well. And there was uh, this thing about depression, uh, the change, stuff like that. I just, just a year ago, I got a diagnosis of ADHD. So oh. I'm currently struggling with the change in my life and uh, the ways to handle and routines and shit like that so it's difficult Shem has yeah. ADHD um, mm. so you guys can totally bond over that yep. after and this because it's and difficult and you have ADHD <laughs> we especially, all have it especially, have it. <laughs> especially <laughs> if you TikTok uh, <laughs> five, five hours a day <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here yeah. first <laughs> but yeah in darkness no maybe although now it's winter in Finland and it's definitely dark. Yeah, but I'd like to have more light there. But we'll see, we'll see. Okay. I say there was definitely a period of healing darkness yeah. between Nespiff and your EP. Oh, uh, definitely. Or uh, <laughs> no, nothing like healing. It was, it was a period of trying to become what my parents and and the society wanted of uh -huh. me. So, and it didn't fit me. And. Uh, then slowly, I'm here. <laughs> so it was a journey in and out of the cave, and now you're playing the underworld. I think I, I went into this cave, uh, which suppressed me, and uh, and now I'm opening up, but the cave is very long, very long, and opens up slowly. How has the uh, reception been to the uh, the newer tracks, now that they've been mixed in with the, uh, the Nespiff tracks live? Uh, do you, what do you mean by newer? Because uh, uh, of the uh, the vanishing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, newer. 
that's the point. Yeah. Recorded in 2006. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and re released shortly after that in 2014. <laughs> which is like half of you listeners who weren't born when it was released. But yeah, uh, because we have also, we also have four new tracks. Uh, and some people have heard them, but... but uh, Maybe that's later. Anyway, Ooh, okay. uh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, whenever we, we play f the Faces song live, it's like uh, it doesn't get the cheers. <laughs> 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 but uh, I I know that uh, people like that song, but it's too complicated for most people and takes time that they work. And but we have those. We will play, be playing one of the. The, the songs that were made in 92 and uh, those hit the people because they are something between the first demo and Nesbeth. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Do you want to go for the present? Yeah, let's go. The best gift in the world. I hope. <laughs> I totally wish. Here we go. The Warrior. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Warrior. Number 28, I think. Uh, I don't think we've ever had the Warrior card pulled yeah. before, have we? Oh, we have, Arthur. Yeah. Not as much attention, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Nice. I opened it on the right page. A warrior is seen in all his pride in full armor against the background of a medieval castle with sword drawn but at rest. This card stands for the hero who rescues his princess, the knight in shining armor of the fairy stories. He is an embodiment of the masculine virtue of strength and courage, but one aspect can be the reverse. As with the beauty, hence the reverse crosses, he can be vengeful, quarrelsome, aggressive, and the typical male chauvinist pick. I think it's more the first one. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that didn't hit me at all. <laughs> in the target. It's yeah. like, it's like uh, you... You put a gun on my head and, <laughs> oh! uh, and shoot that way. <laughs> Sometimes the cards don't hit home. Uh, yep, yep. So maybe not the yeah. warrior. Well, but that kind of uh, lifted up the the other thing that uh, because uh, I've been trying to, I suppressed my emotions back when I was a kid and uh, not understood and introvert and stuff like in the cave. Oh. And, uh, Mm, I've been trying to. If you're not a warrior, what D and D class are you? <laughs> uh, the wussy. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I've I've been trying to uh, work with emotions because I suppress those and uh, uh, I have lots of emotions, but I deny uh, the the hard ones. So I've had to, and I'm still trying to learn to express them and feel them. And what helped you start expressing? Was there like a turning point for you where you realized you needed to stop doing it's, that? Uh, it started when I was diagnosed with uh, depression uh, 11 years ago. And just one year ago, I got the diagnosis of ADHD. I uh, primarily inattentive. So and then uh, also I didn't get the diagnosis but it's clear that I'm a bit autistic and, and uh, OCD which I know very well <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, that explained a lot of mm. things uh, but if you're 25 like I am uh, <laughs> it's been a long time wiring your head the wrong way so it's, it's very good. It's gonna take like uh, 80 years, and then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that you're so open about that. Uh, I really respect that. Yeah, that will help you, people watching. You. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I've been. Uh, if I didn't have the problem of starting things, I would have been uh, writing about this publicly because uh, I want to talk about these things, not preach, but to make sure that uh, uh, start like the warrior <laughs> can be like this. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely been a shift recently in people being more open about mental health know. issues, and I mm. think it's been really that helpful is. for a lot that of people. Is. I think social media has kind of helped with it as well, hasn't it? I think it's allowed people a different platform to be more forthcoming. It has. Uh, social media is not all bad. It's, uh, it has good aspects, but of course it's deemed by the bad ones. But I get you. It's a double-edged mm. sword, like the one the warrior has. Mm. 
Shall we go to the future? Yeah, let's go to the future because that's what I want to know. Here we have the sun. Oh, nice. Mifras are playing tonight. That's a sun band. It's number 20. Yep. <laughs> the sun. The sun stands high over the harvest field with wheat sheaves, ripe corn and cornflowers. Children skip around a maypole in a celebration of fertility of the land. The sun stands for power, energy and creative forces behind the universe. A male sign, it symbolizes confidence and success and a benign influence on all around it. It represents the conscious power of the intellect. Hey. Here we go, isn't it? And actually, uh, we found that the warrior fit in the context. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, quite the opposite, but still. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay, yeah, that's uh, something I'd definitely want to have in my life. That kind of brightness and uh, strength and... and uh, things that uh, I get things done and and then by the way the fun funny thing is that uh, my project which I have been planning uh, for 25 years or so uh, the name has the sun in it to <laughs> say oh. musical projects perhaps uh, it's a it's a trilogy of albums that mix together and, and like totally impossible for me to handle but fortunately i have those 80 years left <laughs> <laughs> it is like the perfect blessing and curse as a musician to have adhd <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it is it is it's like a, uh, it was a blessing when i was young because uh, i didn't have any responsibilities and uh, my uh, my superpower the warrior power was uh, was that i could concentrate I was interested in basically anything so I could concentrate on classes I didn't have to read anything else but but uh, history and the numbers and it was like ah, <laughs> very hard for me uh, but I got good grades and then became reality and uh, being an adult <laughs> I just talked to somebody that I still don't feel like an adult it's I'm still a kid and well, you're only 25, though. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's actually the, the. I've always, well, this year because I turned 25 this year. I've thought that uh, when you're 25, you're adult, not when you're 18. I agree. I mean, they do mm. say your prefrontal cortex in your brain it doesn't yep. stop developing until mm. you're like 26. Yep, yep. So we're literally just mm. children until then. Yeah. Yeah. I know, and uh, I kind of uh, with uh, well, I drew it from following people on mass and myself and later on i learned that okay it's <laughs> it kind of fits I'm but then again <laughs> i never grew up to be an adult so <laughs> what do i know but you've come from the cave to the sun mm. and like soon will be illuminated by your beautiful new projects the warrior comes out from the cave to the sun yeah it's very poetic it's very poetic. It also, is. the creative process as well. Like, you know, you're taking something internal and making it external, and people do look mm. up to you. Mm. Like, people tonight will be going fucking mm. crazy as yeah. well. And it's occasionally pretty weird because I, I am still this insecure Finnish guy from a small town. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then I go on stage, and I had to learn to do it, but I understand that it's. It's part of me. It's what what I want to be. So, on stage, I get to be what I am inside, and uh, get accepted for being being like that. And if I screw up, uh, I'm forgiven too. Yeah. <laughs> so, then of course those things start blending together, uh, little by little, and uh, and I'm more confident I'm now in life too, because of that. But yeah, it's a very, the original thing was that I'm looked up to. Uh, and, uh, uh, it's pretty hard for me because I'm, I'm like, I'm a person that thinks that everybody is on the same level. So we are all 170 yeah. <laughs> Cent <laughs> cent <laughs> centimeters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, you are. But uh, the point is that nobody is higher or bigger or 
uh, more important than anybody. Of course, uh, then there are people who I don't respect at all, and that changes. But if you are good enough, we are equal. I get you. I get you. So has it been um, particularly uh, either enlightening or surprising to see mm. the adoration come full circle? Because I know you featured on uh, mm. the Blood Incantation track in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's been like a big revival with the mm. OSDM kind of sound. And mm. So, like, how has that been for you to kind of get some of the credit you've been due for what, in my opinion, is quite mm. a long time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, fuck. The next year, it's 30 years from Nesbitt, the release of Nesbitt. So, uh, where did the centuries go? <laughs> but anyway, uh, mm, of course, it's humbling. It's uh, it's nice. Uh, in a way, when I created the music, I realized that I'm doing something different. And I thought that uh, somebody will pick it up instantly and uh, evolve it and uh, make it better and stuff like that and I will be very jealous because I did not didn't get there uh, but, uh, but I was surprised a surprise that especially after 93 94 everything went more straightforward base there were exceptions but people uh, maybe it was because people came into metal scene and they still still were accustomed to pop and rock and stuff like that and and then well everybody listened to easier stuff and uh, but little by little it boiled there and uh, and I'm happy that because of my vision and what I've told to people many people who uh, listen if, if you want to sound like me don't because uh, if you can that's totally fine you can replace me but uh, the point is there that people try to ask how to sound like me in in vocals or guitar and I always tell them that don't do that do what's natural to you and make it work and if you're lucky if you work hard I hate working hard but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still uh, if you work hard if you work towards it it's not hard working when you do what you do naturally. Uh, it may pay off. Uh, maybe someday I'll be 70 years old and interviewing you <laughs> because you did that because I told this to you. This is because I remember reading mm. saying that uh, Martin Van Drunen and mm. LG Petrov being uh, vocal yep. influencers. Yep. And it's cool because their vocalists and me, Shem, are both massive fans of them. Oh, Obviously, okay. style, st stylistically, you're quite different. Mm, yep. So I think it's always the vocalists that have a distinct sound that mm. tend to be the ones that stand yeah, out. Yeah, the, the distinction, I think, what played the main role here. Because they were... And uh, I wanted to sound like them, but I just didn't have the means. And uh, I felt that the screaming and, and uh, using the throat... Uh, for some reason, I don't remember how it happened, but the other sound came out <laughs> and, and uh, I felt that okay uh, maybe this is good enough because it was like uh, more subtle it wasn't I didn't have to be angry mm -hmm. uh, I was angry inside but <laughs> but like a, as a Finnish person who's most like this that uh, I I hate everything <laughs> but that's why i take a beer and go to sauna <laughs> and i go fuck you all <laughs> goodbye but uh, the aggression is very hard for us to show many times uh, it's changed of course and it's good because uh, you should show aggression too but back then uh, i actually wanted somebody else to do the vocals and nobody did so they were even shyer and uh, I was like, maybe I have to do it, found my way and it didn't sound anything like I wanted. Yeah. So you're kind of like the James Hetfield of the death metal scene. Like yesterday I screwed a riff, screwed up a riff uh, on stage because I 
I started thinking that yeah, James Hetfield plays <laughs> picks, picks down too. <laughs> like, do I look like James Hetfield now? And like, I said, where where were we going? Really, it, it happened yesterday. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and like, I I was in awe that in another way I was like, yeah, I'm doing it like James has always done. And, uh, doing what? What was I doing? What what next? <laughs> So you talk about yeah. sort of music going back to basics. Yeah. Uh, do you yourself ever uh, listen to the old rockabilly bands like uh, Stray Cats and Matchbox? Yeah, actually, uh, you read that somewhere, right? I did, yes. <laughs> 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 like, uh, it's like, uh, for some reason, found just they just popped out. Like, uh, like I, I know these bands might have been those who he liked when he was a kid. Yeah, they were. <laughs> uh, that's where it started. It, it was a rock and roll. Uh, I remember me and my brother, we were playing tennis rackets and uh, Stray Cats and Matchbox was playing there in the background. And that was a kind of opening thing for me. I felt like I, I want to do this or be like this or anything and it took a while because uh, the reality was different it was like i got the guitar and uh, okay what now and then uh, half a year after that a friend came and told how to tune the guitar oh okay <laughs> so this is how it works better and then then it took something like half a year and i made well i collected my first band uh, and it was horrible of course <laughs> and, uh, but Little by little, I started finding out. I once again, I first thought that uh, I should do music some way uh, that's uh, appropriate. But then, it, and I tried, and uh, then it was uh, ah, no shit. I want to do these things, like these scales, uh, which aren't scales because <laughs> because <laughs> there's no. <laughs> there are no rules, yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because, well, <laughs> it's, uh, I remember in, a, in an interview somebody asked, uh, uh, what, what scales do you use? And my answer was, what is scale? <laughs> 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 so you've, well, with Stray Cats being from uh, right. Long Island, you've kind of come a bit full circle. Cause, mm. uh, Shem was informing me that Will Smith of the Heavy Hole podcast oh. had a bit of a hand to play in you doing some shows in the US. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So it was, um, what was your experiences been like, kind of like uh, doing some of the US tours? Because um, if I'm not mistaken, were you on one of the Psycho Las Vegas uh, lineups? Uh, we've never it? played in Las Vegas. Oh, uh, God damn. With, uh, <laughs> I, yes. He did. He did some of the background work, but not all. Damn it! <laughs> but hey, it's human to fail. It is. Um, you're gonna see it tonight <laughs> <laughs> on stage live. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we never play. I, I'd like to. Be, we played there with uh, Jess and the Ancient Ones oh. on the on the King Diamond tour. I was oh, there. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the question was. <laughs> No, I think it was just yeah. a general, just yeah. kind of, uh, just... Mm. Yeah, like, uh, well, about the USA and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and just uh, mm. sort of touring life sort of 30 mm. years in, has there been kind of like a revitalization on this newest cycle that's... Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, for me it's been... Uh, because uh, when I was a youngster, uh, realizing that I might be able to do some music, especially when I learned to tune the guitar, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> it, uh, of course, then it was like it would be someday possible to play in the USA because USA was the place. It was for everybody in Finland. It was like if somebody got to play in USA, it was huge, even though they played for, well, in front of 20 people and uh, didn't have a backstage, <laughs> which is kind of reality sometimes <laughs> in, in the USA, but uh, not, not anymore with us. But. <laughs> oh, you motherfucker! <laughs> Unfair. <laughs> but anyway, 
Anyway, uh, of course now we're used to it, uh, but still it's uh, it's uh, the main main thing in that is that uh, the biggest market for our music is United States, and uh, I I didn't really understand why because uh, especially when we when the the album came out and the things went more straightforward and stuff like that. Uh, it was like uh, I don't still understand why it grew, why it grew up in the USA, little by little. Because I, I always thought that okay, they are looking for more primitive and uh, fist in the mouth kind of music. So it's it was cool because I got to live my dream, uh, which of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's totally different <laughs> than, than the dream I had. I kind of, I kind of had this private jet because, uh, of course, then you could have it. There wasn't any climate problems, <laughs> stuff like that, and champagne and uh, appreciation and uh, yeah. Uh, like okay. A yeah, yeah. Usually, yeah. Usually going going to sleep crying and. Uh, oh. <laughs> by biting the shotgun, but <laughs> st still managing to do something tomorrow <laughs> with the help of drugs, of course. <laughs> Could that be the sound bite for the interview? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought of those things too. Like, uh, if I if I got really famous. Not with this music, but <laughs> I'm, uh, on I'm, TikTok. I'm realistic. <laughs> Don't think I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, uh, but some else, something else. Uh, I thought of those things, and uh, I thought that, yeah, that would be uh, the the perishing of Auntie Bowman. It's like I would be one of those who died at 28. Was it 28 Club or oh, 20 yeah, the 20, 27 yeah, yeah. Club? 27 like Club. Club. So yeah. I only have two years. Shit. Yeah, you still got Shit. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can still you can still drop even more like sick albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the trilogy. Cool. <laughs> Do the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've gotta be pretty quick now. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have some mediocre riffs there. <laughs> <laughs> Some James Hetfield moments, perhaps. Mm, yeah, that happened. But then, then again, I saw them in Hellfest now today for the first time in my life, and uh, I appreciated a lot of it. I thought that I wouldn't, but they pulled a two and a half hour set, and they tried. They were very tired at the end and uh, pissed off of some technical problems, but they pulled off, and uh, it was like, yeah these guys still want to do it and uh, still want to asshole <laughs> still, still still want to still want to do it uh, as well as possible how was Hellfest for you because you guys rocked your crowd uh, was we were in it uh, um, your crowd was bloody awesome in my opinion and uh, you guys seemed okay. stoked oh, yeah, as well weather. okay yeah yeah it was cool uh, the first time was in a way better because uh, we had a better slot. Uh, now we played the, like 12.35 in the morning. It was like I woke up at 12 and oh shit, we have to go to play. <laughs> but, and everybody else did that too. But uh, otherwise uh, it's, well, as you know, it's a cool festival. It's like you have a hundred thousand people there and, and the small stages the smallest stages like ours is like 10,000 capacity and uh, something else <laughs> it, it was nice of yeah. course you guys rocked and you had like uh -huh. a you know i thought you were gonna wear it but you had like a special hellfest t-shirt with like the front yep, flag yep, colors yeah. and yeah and by the way uh get and sign onto my uh, mailing list if you want one of those because what I don't sell for cheap, by the way, uh, will be burned. Oh, like Chanel. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. As a protest, protest about climate change. Uh, I think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Floyd was saying. Oh, you have a point to make. 
No, but I was just going to say were... very quickly, did you manage to catch uh, Merciful Fate at all at Hellfest? Or? I did, but that's another story. Well, let's go through that quickly. Uh, I before ju- Right before that, I fetched the uh, leftover merchandise, which was basically all the merchandise we took in. And uh, I was so disappointed in everything and uh, felt like a failure. And I went to watch Merciful Fate and uh, I felt nothing like, be- although that was something I grew up with. Yeah. And I expected to see that, but that's how it goes. So I, you have your ups, you have the downs. Yeah, yeah. So I went backstage and sit, sat there alone and and uh, collected my myself to watch Metallica. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Floyd was saying that you have a nickname in Finland, which is the Finnish word for cloud. That's what it was listed as on the mm. Encyclopedia Metallum for the Blood Incantation album. So what? What cloud? Yes, so... <laughs> He's getting his notes! Ah, Pilebe, Ah, you're talking about Pilebe, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's not my... It's not my nickname, it was a funny thing that... Uh, uh, let's get through this quickly. Uh, Finnish people... Uh, spo- uh, well, if they... If they talk, talk about cannabis, it's Pilebe, which is cloud. Ah. Okay, uh, so uh, and uh, the guys of Bloody Cotation, uh, they have uh, once tried <laughs> Pilebi, and, um, <laughs> and uh, we said that uh, when you are on cannabis, uh, you are Pilebessa. So they okay, so it's Pilebe. Uh No, it's actually Pilebi, but it became a joke. Like a Pileve, they are like, yeah, good Pileve. And, uh, <laughs> and we played in Romania and uh, left there a message for them, like Pileve. <laughs> Pileve. Uh, but not my nickname. I actually don't do drugs apart from now the legal ones, which I take for the newly found. When I was 24, <laughs> <laughs> newly found ADHD. <laughs> uh, no, 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 that would have been three years ago. So. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, I respect that. We also are, we abstain. Well, mm. me and Floyd do anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> this guy is like it's rammed with Pilava right now. This guy's the Pilava king. <laughs> but, uh, for me, actually, it's like, I don't... And basically, Epstein, I've been uh, uh, kind of worried I might get too into something. Yeah. And I like it. Uh, well, now I have amphetamine daily for my condition. And uh, I didn't try it, even though I, I could have tried it 25 years ago or so. And it could have, uh, like, opened up the thing. So sometimes, because, you know, drugs in English are drugs, legal and illegal. In, fi- in Finnish they are different words, but, but for some people they work, but still don't go trying yourself because it's it's usually goes the wrong way. The thing is when you have the things that you have, you have mm. very, um, you have a predilection to addiction, right? Mm. It's like, you know, there's like the thing, because I have some similar things going on. Mm. You have a, like, a, it's very easy to go down yeah, too yeah, far. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, because it's very hard to get back to this world and live here and enjoy it if you're, if you get out of it. Yeah. That's why my theory is that most alcoholics and drug addicts are actually just trying to stay out of this reality because it's too hard for them and when you do the drugs and alcohol it's very hard after that to just decide that okay I won't do the drugs that actually help me live here and as we know they don't help help you live here they just uh, wipe out reality for for a moment so what do you do um, instead of drugs? Like, do you do you read fa- like you love sci-fi? Right? Uh, yeah, I did, but I don't read anymore, which is a shame. Mm. 
What did you read? What did you? What, read, what, do you, uh, what are your things that you love? In uh, the, sci-fi. Uh, in the genre, yeah. like, do you love Dune? Do you love? Uh, no, but it was more like a really analytical. Or well, I the biggest things I remember are Ian Banks, Ian M. Banks, uh, Asimov. Yeah, of course. Fucking Russian, sorry. Do you like Ursula? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like Ursula? I have nothing against <laughs> you good Russians, <laughs> who, Russians. Who, who will overthrow that shitty government, okay? <laughs> but anyway, and uh, then uh, Philip K. Dick and nice. stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. Hmm. I dig that. I respect that. We, are, we love sci-fi. We love a bit of all of that jazz. Hmm. Thank you so much for your time, anti Hey, thank you. Do you have any final remarks? No, just that it's a pleasure to meet you, and I've been a fan of Demolition Likewise. for a very long time. Likewise. So, and I am incredibly... Uh, <laughs> so this is the problem with being bald in the beard, it's just such a common cut <laughs> And I'm looking forward to the gig, and you yeah. are playing uh, Paris tomorrow, yes? Yep. Is that sold out? Still tickets available? Uh, I have no idea. Oh, okay. By well, the time <laughs> this goes out, the Paris gig will be over, probably. If it's but. not sold out, it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sold out. Thank you so much, Anti Bowman. Hey, thank you. It was a freaking pleasure. This was different. This was nice. Oh, Sla- Slava Ukraini and freedom to Iran. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Thank you, girls. There, you're bigger men Zen. than the Russian men are. Most, <laughs> mostly. Yeah, we're fucking powerful. Zen Zen of, yeah, I know a couple of good Russians. Be a good Russian. Be a good Russian. <laughs> you heard it here. Thank you so okay. much hey, for watching. You. Like and pleasure. subscribe. Until <laughs> <laughs> <Still> next time. By the way, the 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 important songs of the village. Three of them coming. We'll start with. The opening track of Nested. Yeah! When the sun drank away to the water. Yeah!